You are listening to the Beloit Podcast. Today on the Beloit Podcast, we're talking to Beloit native Kyle Weaver. Kyle is someone with an obvious dedication and drive to stay busy doing what he loves the most, which is exactly what we're used to at the Beloit Podcast. Here's one more busy person I was lucky to catch up with for just a few minutes. Let's welcome Kyle Weaver to the Beloit Podcast. Did you get peach tea lemonade? Not a big coffee drinker, but no. not too much. I didn't think so. Yeah, not too much. Every now and then I'll drink some for the taste, but yeah. nah, not a big coffee drinker. So. Yeah, I wanted to get you here for a lot of stuff. I don't even know really to start uh, okay. today. You, uh, you threw got me, me off. You got me, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, Last week, I've moved to a radio station, so I've uh, been live broadcasting every morning, and that's new to me. I want to kind of introduce you. Uh, a lot of people around Beloit are familiar with you, but I have downloads in Japan, Germany, the UK, everywhere. Right. Do you want to maybe just tell us a little bit about yourself? Go from there. Okay. Uh, well, my name is Kyle Weaver. Uh, from Beloit, Wisconsin. Born and raised. Um, I have an older brother, and younger sister. Uh, three child household. Uh, my mother, and my father. Uh, my father was uh, he worked at the University of uh, Wisconsin Whitewater at administration. Uh, he's retired now, and my mother currently works at Hormel, and uh, she's retiring soon. So uh, I grew up basically. Uh, around two parents that worked hard every day, yep. you know, and uh, that was instilled in me not only how to work, but uh, that drive. working the right way and having some type of goal to get somewhere, you know. Right. So that, 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 that was instilled in me early. Um, and I think just my uncles, uh, Three of my uncles, my dad's brothers, uh, including my dad as well, all play sports. Nice. Um, so that started early. Uh, both my siblings uh, play sports, basketball, football. Um, so I grew up in an athletic family, and I just took that on, you know, as early as I can remember. And um, I stuck with it. Yeah. You know, I played everything, and uh, basketball just became uh, my, my real love. And um, as I got better, I worked on it. I practiced it. Um, competed at a, at a higher level. Um, I remember actually being young and traveling to Madison, Milwaukee, Chicago, just to practice on teams, to yeah. just be seen, to get the exposure, you know. Right. Uh, going to different tournaments out of state. Uh, I don't know how my parents did it financially. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, you know, looking back, um, you, you just really appreciate things like that because, you know, it really – it helped me and it got me to where I am today. You know, those small things. So, um, you know, I just stuck with that. The daily dedication. Yeah, yeah, just working at it, man. And um, high school was when I really started to take on, you know, myself and really take it serious, you know. Um, went to Bloy Memorial. Yep. Uh, what uh, what uh, year did you graduate? 2004. I did too. I was uh, in your class. Four, okay. I was in and out of Beloit Memorial. I kind of went to Craig for a little bit too. Uh, okay, okay. I was around Memorial. Nice. Around. Nice. Around, right, right. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, went to high school, graduated, um, and uh, was blessed to have a scholarship to go to Washington State. Uh, went to Washington State University for four years, uh, which was a great experience, man. Probably one of the best experiences, yeah, for sure, that I. Uh, I, uh, I I can't even tell you the stories and the, the moments that I had that were just like life changing. It was so many. So up until this, you had done some local traveling, right? Some right. training in that sense, but going to Washington was it just took a whole it to the next level. Yeah, That's you cool. know the uh, that collegiate level, man, and especially being from here. You know, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm always representing Beloit, and I'm I'm proud to be from here and. You know, I, I tell everybody about Beloit, everywhere I go, you yep. know, from here to, you know, Japan, you know, I, Beloit, Wisconsin, you know. Exactly. And uh, I, I'm just like, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a representative, you know. I don't look at, you know, me being an athlete now as uh, just me being a player, you know. It's right. much bigger than me, right. you know, and, and I, I take that with me everywhere I go. 
and it means a lot to me. You know, I have a lot of pride in what I do, and um, uh, it all started here. You know, and, and now you I'm back home. Can't exchange that. Yeah, man. You know, and just to be able to come home and you know uh, talk to you even and, yep. and do this now, you know, it just it means a lot. You know, well, I knew that's why I had to get you here because um, anyone who's successful at what they do obviously has a little passion for what they do and you don't get that very easily you usually get that by staying dedicated to what you do every day and you can't stay dedicated to what you do every day unless you have firm roots and a good foundation and Beloit for me uh, there's been times in my life where I did not see it that way Mm -hmm. but later uh, in my life the older I get I really look back at Beloit, and I'm amazed at how much Beloit has done for me, just to say it's my home. Yeah. And just like you're saying, it's a great thing to say, you can go anywhere in the world and still say you're from Beloit, and it means something to you. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, uh, yeah, so I took on the college experience, you know, uh, like I said, that was an awesome time in my life, uh, to be away from home, you know, for the first time, and I really started to become a man, you know, yeah. uh, just developing personally uh, on the basketball side. I got a lot better. Um, there four years and finished and uh, drafted to the NBA, uh, drafted to uh, the Charlotte Bobcats. How'd you handle that? It was... Because I know, like you said, going to Washington, that's a whole new page. But then, then you got that. Yeah. Uh, you're raising the bar even more. Even more, yeah, man. But at that point, are you just like, this is a momentum keep going with it or how is that for you I, I think yeah I think it was like okay I had a sense of like wow like this is real you know like I, I, I really got to a point that yeah. I dreamed of mm-hmm. you know that's that's a dream for me it's hard to kick into it yeah you know but I still had those moments where I was like is this real <laughs> like <laughs> you know, this is really happening you know yeah, this yeah. is like serious you know um yeah got drafted uh was traded right away to Oklahoma City, played there uh, most of my professional career in the NBA, also played in Chicago, Utah, and uh, Memphis, and yeah, from there, uh, my first, my first season in Europe was in Belgium, and it was a short stint, it was about three to four months, Um, after the regular season here, uh, I finished in Utah, and went to Belgium and played in the league there, Uh, won a championship, Uh, met a bunch of great guys, uh, Americans there on that team, and uh, still in touch with to this day and that was my first European experience that sounds really interesting now I'm not a big sports guy and I'm not afraid to say that uh, I stay up on more boring things like politics (laughs) more boring things so tell me about playing basketball in Europe yeah that sounds interesting to me Mm -hmm. tell me about that a little bit that's uh is that something you're gonna be doing in the future yeah definitely something that I will be doing in the future. Uh, I've played in Belgium, played in Germany, played in Italy, and I've played in Israel. Wow. So I've bounced around and played in some different leagues in different countries, and every country that I've played in is unique in its own way. Mm-hmm. You know, and you find something that you kind of gravitate towards in different places. Yeah. Uh, whether it's the food, the culture, the language. Uh, you know, the, the kids there, uh, the weather. Like, there's so many different things that you kind of adapt to in these different places. And um, it's a beautiful thing, man, to just meet so many different people. Yeah, it's got to be an amazing experience. Yeah, that do so many different things, man. That's so different from here, you know. And being away for so long, because normally a season is about six to eight months you're gone. Okay. You know, uh, and when you're away for so long, you kind of – you kind of look back at America different, you know, because you're not really uh, American anymore. Yeah. You know, you kind of, it will at least me, you know, when I go to different countries, I try to just indulge myself into what they do, what they eat, how they talk, yeah. you know, their, their slang even, you know, the little yep. things that they do and what they're accustomed to. I try to force myself to do and, and be like the people there because, for one, they reasonable. appreciate it. You know, they appreciate it. Cause they know you're American <laughs> yeah. and, and they appreciate that you're accepting them and trying to even, you know, speak or whatever it is, you know, and, yeah. uh, it, it gives you a little bit more comfort being there too, you know, mm-hmm. cause being away from home, you know, it's tough, you know, the food, oh, yeah. you miss your family and your friends and, you know, all those little things, even just hearing English sometimes, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's tough. And I was in Naples, Italy, uh, a couple seasons ago and, uh, Southern Italy, the English there is not really 
I mean, you find people that speak great English everywhere in the world, you know what I mean? Yeah. But specifically there, I remember I had to learn Italian. Like, it, it was it was to the point where I didn't hear English, and it was like, okay, I, I got to, like, understand what they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and I just got to pick it up. You have to adapt. And, and yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what happened, man. I, a few months there, I was just picking it up. I got some books, and I, I had free time. I was learning, and... <laughs> I was ordering food in Italian. There I could go. just have, you know, basic conversation. Yeah. And, you, and you feel like you fit in, you know. It, you feel different. And it's not like you don't feel so much as an, as an outcast, you yeah. know, when you're there. So uh, that definitely helped me, you know, every time I go. So, That's awesome. Uh, I actually just signed to Italy, so I'll be leaving next week. So I'll be going wow. back to go again. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to stay uh, up to date with you. What's the best yeah. way for people to keep up with you online? Glad you brought that up, man. That's something I actually wanted to tell you about was uh, I want to develop some type of communication. I don't know how yet, but I want to be able to get uh, game films. I want to be able to get, you know, some homemade videos and certain things that just that I go through on a day to day or a week to week just so people can see what I do there, how it yes. is there and, you know, and, and then make it easier for people to, you know, just kind of keep up with me and, you know, that care and, and want to really know somehow I can you know, find a way to post things and yes. I, I want to be better at that because you know sometimes when I go I kind of just get into a zone and I just kind of forget about everything yeah. and I just kind of lock in and focus on you know practice games practice games and uh, you do a lot though and there's a lot to capture and I understand that yeah. and that's uh that's definitely something we need to get more people focused on definitely because yeah. I know Beloit's trying to stay up with you a lot of people here yeah. are trying to keep up with you yeah for sure for sure I, one thing that I, I really want to focus on uh, this up this upcoming summer, I've done a lot of things with different organizations, uh, feed the families, and uh, you know I'm actually you know getting my own foundation off the ground and starting to do more things here. Had a, had a couple camps here, did some things for some kids, and uh, I want to be more consistent with those things um, and make them a lot more relevant here. Uh, been a little spotty, you know. Being overseas is kind of hard. Being away for so long and then coming back and, ha- yeah, and only having a couple months to, you know, kind of basically regroup and still training and working out to get back for the next season. Yeah. You know, I, I've been kind of struggling with trying to manage, you know, how to do it. And uh, now having my son now, you know, it just adds another dimension to my life. And you know, it's but you're not trying, trying to, to figure give it all up out. On it. You're <laughs> trying to figure out a way to round it all up. And exactly. Keep going. Exactly. Exactly. I like that. Yep. So trying to make it work. But this summer, I'm determined, man. I I turned 30, and this is my year to just kind of start to build up and kind of create my own little brand and just try to uplift Beloit. You know, I want to do a lot more in the city and try to help people like yourself and. Um, just as many people as I can for whatever reason or any type of business or organization that, you know, is going to help Beloit. That's great. I want to be a part of it, so. I keep telling people every time I get a guest on, uh, people ask me, you know, what's the direction of this podcast and what's it really doing? Mm -hmm. To me, I feel like everyone who comes on this is kind of just raising a a little flag just saying, hey, we're out here, you know, we're the people who are kind of, you know, just trying to do stuff. Yeah. And, uh, Surprisingly, I can continue to do the show five days a week because there are so many people in our community who are doing stuff for the community. Right. Beloit is a place rich on social capital, uh, which is outside of financial realm. Yeah. And a lot of people don't focus on that. We're so driven to the money every day, but Beloit is so wealthy in other aspects. Yeah. So it's good to see you want to keep helping us out and stay involved in our community yeah sure man it's, it's sometimes you know even in you know my world of sports man it's sometimes when, when you chase money you know things don't necessarily happen the way you plan on them happening you know i think it's just they can even contradict that sometimes yeah yeah just being true to yourself and you know going to a right situation or a right opportunity is better than the actual the money a lot of times you know yeah. i understand that we all have to eat and i know you know, people have kids and have families and have, you know, a lot of things going on in their lives, man. But uh, I mean, that's something that I've learned, too, man, doing this basketball thing, going from, you know, the NBA, playing from there all the way to, you know, going to Europe or even in the D-League. You know, I've played on so many different levels. Yeah. You know, and when you try to 
make a move all the time based on on you know money is it can make things a little tricky you know it can be confusing i uh, yeah. recently did an episode on eight forms of capital so for me it was an eye opener to learn about this that for me i had always heard the term capital and thought money and you hear people say you know capitalists are bad or things like that if you don't understand that there's other forms of capital like social capital spiritual capital experiential capital yeah. things that are outside of physical the paper we hold on to and the change we hold on to yeah. you can drift away from the important things in your life yeah. so it's a uh, it's always great to hear people who understand that aspect is there anything else you want to promote right now? Oh, man. Uh, I would just say stay tuned for a possible website coming up. Uh, a good season uh, in Italy. Um, the team that I'll be playing on is uh, the Rosetto Sharks. Um, it's a city right outside of Rome, about an hour outside of Rome. Wow. And... Um, it's my first time being there, uh, in this city in particular. Um, been to Rome a few times, uh, beautiful place, beautiful city, beautiful country. So uh, it'll be a new experience for me. Um, actually, one of my teammates on the team that I just signed to this year, I played with before. I played with them previously. So um, and that, that helps when you can you know, make that transition yeah. and you have somebody that you maybe it's know. A little familiarity. Or, yeah, exactly. It makes that transition a little smoother. So uh, nice. yeah, so um, yeah, just to a good season. Um, to a couple things uh, that I want to do as far as uh, coming back to the city this summer. Um, just stay tuned. Uh, I'll be working on some things while I'm away, and uh, hopefully I'll be talking to you again soon about yep. some big things. So Definitely. We'll have you back anytime. I appreciate you joining us. Oh, yeah, no problem. Man. Thanks for having me, man. Yep. Thanks for having Thanks. Me. You just heard my interview with Beloit native Kyle Weaver. As you heard in the interview, uh, I don't keep up with sports too often, but... What I do keep up with is people staying productive with what they truly love doing the most. We talked about quite a bit, everything from a brief background to what Kyle has lined up in the near and distant future. Plenty to look forward to with this Beloit native, including a possible website and other work within the community. Lastly, I'd just like to thank Kyle for joining us for the episode. Make sure to stay tuned to thebeloitpod.com for all future updates. I will be posting my daily morning show from WADR on a regular basis and look forward to more episodes next week. You can email me at thebeloitpod at gmail.com or you can tune in live Mondays through Fridays, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. on 103.5 FM in Janesville. Also streaming live on the web or your mobile device at janesvillecommunityradio.com and the WADR mobile app. You can also leave me a voicemail at 608-466-6013. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you on the next Beloit Podcast.